Hi, this is Meghnath. In this module, we talk about constructors and what are the points that we have to know about constructors. So let's get started. Now to explain constructors, I'll be using the same example that I have used in class 31. So where I have created a class employee and I have two variables ID and name. I have a method read data for reading data from user and I have a method print data. Now here we have seen I just created an object of this employee and when I initialize with new employee, the values in this object like ID and name will be initialized to default values. And if I, I'm here reading the data from user and I'm here printing the data. Now, as we discussed in the previous module 31, if I don't read it, now when I just write this line, employee EMP is equal to new employee. So this is called a default constructor that will initialize the values of ID and name to zero and null respectively. Now without reading it now if I print it emp dot print data. Now if I run the code now you will see the values of ID and name will be zero and null. Now I'm just executing it. Click OK. Now you can see the ID is zero and name is null. So what this default constructor will do is that will initialize the values to default values. Now, now if I want to read the values from user what I have to do here, I have to write emp dot read data. Now, now using this method, I'll read the data and using this method, I print the data. Now, if I run this code, now if I run this code now, you will see that first read data will be called. It's asking me to enter ID, now I'll enter five, enter name, I'm entering here Meghnath, now enter. Now you can see here it's printing whatever has been read data using read data method, it's printing the values using print data method. Now sometimes I want to initialize the values when I create an object. I don't want to call this read data. Now without calling this read data, if I want to initialize the values, I have to go for a constructor. Now what is a constructor? A constructor is used to initialize class variables when you are creating an object. Now what I can do here is, let's take I want to initialize when I'm writing this new employee. Here itself I want to initialize phi comma magnet. Now I don't want to I don't want to read from the user. I, I don't want to call this method while creating object itself. I want to initialize with five and make not. Now in that case, what I have to do is I have to write a constructor. Now what I can do here, I'll go here in the same class. I'll be writing a method, use a defined constructor. I'm going to write now. So I'll write here employee. And what is the first parameter I need to pass? Int eid. And what is the second parameter? EID stands for employee ID. And I have to pass string E name. Now I'll be writing here. So now this is called a constructor. And remember the name of the class should be same as your constructor. And constructor is like a method, but you don't have to write public void anything. You don't have to write it. So just write here the same as your class name employee. This is a constructor which will have same as your class name, write the parameters and assign these value. So this EID assigned to this ID, this E name assigned to this name. So how do we do it here? So I'll be writing here ID is equal to EID and I'll be writing here name is equal to E name. So now what happens here is I, my default constructor will be gone. So the moment I write this user defined constructor, my default constructor with this, which, which don't have any parameters here will be gone. So now, now what I can do here is I can write here new employee and I don't want to call the read data now because I can initialize here itself. So I can write here five comma make not. Now when I write like this, this five will be, will go to here uh, EID and this name make not will go to this E name and those values will be assigned to ID and name and while printing it, it'll print the values respectively. Now that's how this constructor works. So what is, if someone asks you, what is the use of a constructor? A constructor is used to initialize the class variables when creating an object. So when you're creating an object, you directly want to initialize the values. You don't want to read from the user, so you can create a constructor. Now, now remember you can create any number of constructors. Now let's take, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, now in this case, now if I print it, now if I run the code now, let's check I'm writing here 15 and make another. Now if I run the code now, let's see this. 
I'm executing this code. Now you can see it's printing 15 and make another because I'm initializing the constructor. Now, now maybe I think I don't want to initialize here now. Sometimes I don't want to initialize. I want to initialize using default constructor. But now if I put here as a default constructor, now see this, I'm putting like this, I'm getting an error. Because the moment you create a user defined constructor, the default constructor will be gone. So I'm getting an error like this. Now what I have to do here, I have to create another constructor, employee, and I have to leave it blank. And here I can write like ID is equal to zero and name is equal to null. Now that's what your default constructor used to do before, right? So before you create this, uh, this is the functionality that was done by default constructor. So if you see here, now this is not giving error. Now what happens when you write like new employee, it'll directly go here and it'll initialize the values to zero and null. And if I am sending some parameters here, let's say I'm sending some parameters here saying like one comma Rajiv. Now in this case, it'll go to the constructor, it'll go to this constructor here and it'll call. Now, now you might get a doubt. Now if someone asks you, let's say I'm deleting both the constructors here, I'm deleting both the constructors. If someone asks you how many constructors this class is having, your answer should be one. Because by default, there is a constructor which you don't see. When, whenever you create a class, by default, there'll be a default constructor which will initialize the values to zeros and nulls depending on the default values of the data types, right? So although you don't see a default constructor here, there is a default constructor. So now if I remove this, so now you are seeing this employee without parameters, it's not giving error, but you don't see it here, but it's there by default. So if someone asks you how many constructors are there by, by default, when you create a class, you'll have one default constructor. But when you create your own constructor, the default constructor will be gone. So in that case, if you need the default constructor, you have to create it again. What I mean to say here, now if I create like this employee, and I'm writing here int eid, comma, string, string e name, and now I'm writing here id is equal to eid, and name is equal to e name. The moment you create your own constructor now, the default constructor will be gone. Now this will give an error. So you have to create it once again, the default constructor. So I hope you're clear. I explained it a couple of times. Now I'm creating my default constructor because I've created user defined constructor id equal to zero and name equal to null. Now, now I got a requirement saying only the name I have to read from the user ID, I want to use constructor. Now what I can write here is, what I repeat once again, only the name I want to initialize here. When I'm creating object, only the name I have to initialize, ID let's take automatically it's generated. Now what I can do here is, I can write here the constructor with only the ID or with only the name. Now see here, employee int EID or employee int uh, string string uh, e name and now name is equal to e name now this constructor will only will only initialize the name as parameter when creating an object id maybe i'll write one more method public void read id now see here i'll write sysfo control space and enter id now i'll be reading this id here id is equal to obj dot next int now see here this read id i'm reading from the user and name i will read it with the object creation now see here what's what i'm going to do here now i'll be writing here employee emp is equal to new employee now i'll do control space now you can see here when i do control space you'll be seeing here three constructors employee with three constructors now I'm seeing here inner type and this is this these three are constructors. Now either I can send I can send nothing, I can send EID and E name, or I can send just E name. Now what I'll do here, I'll write here uh, Magnath. Now how I can how I can send ID is I can send using emp dot read ID. Now now name I'm sending through constructor and ID I'm reading it here and I'll print it here. Let's run the code now. 
Now name will be initialized by constructor, so only read ID is asking. So I will print here 100, enter. Now you can see it's printing like this. So what do we understand from this is you can create any number of constructors. So what this constructor is doing, it is initializing to default values. What this constructor is doing, it's initializing to whatever values I send. And this constructor is only reading name and ID I am reading you this, using this method. Or maybe I want to have another constructor with only uh, uh, ID I want to initialize. So I can write here employee int ID and I can write here ID is equal to, so I'll just write here EID and I'll write here EID. Now what this constructor is doing, this initializing employee ID when create an object. Now if I want to read name, I can write one method here, read name and for ID I'll call this constructor, for name I'll call the method that I'm going to write. So, so what I mean to say here is you can create any number of constructors. So here we have four constructors and you can create any number of constructors. And what is the use of constructor? A constructor is used to initialize, initialize class variables when you're creating an object. Now see here, I'm creating an object and I want to initialize a name with Meghna. So this is a constructor. Now let's try to understand some very important points about constructors. Now, now let's see the definition of a constructor. Now, a constructor is used to initialize class variables. A constructor is used to initialize class variables. Now what we'll do is we'll try to understand main points that you have to know on constructors. Let's see the first point. Constructors are special methods used to initialize class variables when creating objects. So that's, the, that's what I have explained uh, in, the, in, in Eclipse IDE, right? So constructors are special methods used to initialize class variables when creating objects. Now, a class by default will have a default constructor which initializes class variables to default values. Although you don't see it, you have it by default, so that's the default constructor. Now, next point. When we create a user-defined constructor, default constructor will be gone. So we need to create manually again if required. So when you create any user-defined constructor, the default constructor will be gone, and we need to create it manually again if you require it. Next, a constructor name should be same as your class name. A constructor name should be same as your class name. Next, a class can have any number of constructors. And next, a constructor sh should not have any written type, not even void. So these are the points that you have to know about constructor. So I hope you are clear about constructors and what is the use of constructor and, and creating multiple constructors for a class. So thanks for watching. See you in the next module.